All's awesome good apart from this one spot. <gasps> so that spot just there is, believe it or not, one of my boys had a little bit of a accident, a little bit of a wee wee, and he did a wee on the grass basically. So it must have had some salt in his way, man. So it's burning off, which is a bit of a bummer. But anyway, let's get talking about killing off this nut grass in my yard finally. Yo mate, what up? Welcome to another lawn tip vid. Alrighty, so just before we dive into this topic today on nut grass, just check out how the yard's looking. It's looking really good. A um, couple of days after a cut, and it's just looking schmick. This 12 mil is looking absolutely beautiful. So I'll turn the camera around so you can see instead of my face. Look at that. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness gracious. Looking good. So the lawn's still getting used to this 12 miller cut. Every time I cut it, I do cut again into the stem of the plant and it gets a little bit of yellowing cast across the whole yard. So Australia Day is coming up on the weekend. You guys will be previewing this on Australia Day. Um, so I'm gonna raise my height of cut just slightly so it keeps this nice lush green color. So I might bring it up two mil just so it actually keeps nice and green. And what I'm gonna do after that is bring it down to 10 mil and then take it back up to 12 mil again just so it looks nice and lush and can shoot new leaves off the stems there. But anyway, let me just show you guys the nutgrass and the areas that it's most problematic in my yard. Now, nutgrass is pretty common in lawns. I mean, we've got heaps of nutgrass at work around the dam and stuff. So you find, you normally do find nutgrass around sort of areas that are a bit more prone to a bit more water, which there actually does get a little bit more water because when it rains, the rain hits the roof of that shed and then just drops down into that area just there. So I reckon that's a good reason why there's a lot of nut grass just there. There's not really not much nut grass around <laughs> nut grass. I'm struggling to say nut grass now. Around the rest of the yard, um, maybe a spot here and there. So I'm not going to blanket spray this whole yard either. I only spot spray it because there's not heaps. And I tell you what, it's pretty easy to spot in your lawn. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera. You can see like a plant there, a little plant there, a little plant there. Um, a couple of plants just in here as well. If we get up close. You should be able to see them, there we go. That's another one hiding just there. You see how it's that lime green color? That's the easiest way to spot it like that. So there is a little bit more around the rest of my yard, but mainly near that shed there. There's nut grass absolutely everywhere. Man. And the way that you know it's nut grass, it's got this really rigid sort of a leaf on it. And it, oh, if you, the thing is if you pull it out, it'll actually spread and get worse. So make sure you don't pull this stuff out, but it's got a really, I'll just keep a bit of the blade off. It's got a really light green leaf, really rigid looking. And if you dig it up too, it's got little nutlings down underneath, um, down where the roots are, which is why this is so hard to kill unless you've got the right herbicide to kill it. But make sure with this stuff, you don't just pull it out um, from the soil to try to get rid of it, because it won't work, because the little nuts in the ground will just stick in there and you'll have an ongoing problem. It'll get worse and worse like it has here. Alrighty, so today we're going to be applying this herbicide called Sedgehammer. Now you can get this down at Bunnings. Um, I got this one from Globe in particular, but you can get the same product down at Bunnings. Really good product and does really well with nutgrass and Mullumbimby Cooch as well. So the active in this is Halo Sulfuron Methyl. I reckon I got pretty close to pronouncing that right. But yeah, really good herbicide. It's pretty safe for most grass types. So Kikuyu, Buffalo, Cooch, Perennial Ryegrass, Tall Fescue, and it's also fine for Queensland Blue Cooch as well. If I forgot any of the names, I'll just put them down below. But yeah, it's really safe for most grass types in Australia, which is good, which is why this is really, really handy. So this herbicide works systemically. So basically what that means is once you've sprayed the herbicide on the leaf of the plant, it's taken down through the foliage and translocated down into the roots or down to that little nut that's down below. So that's actually done systemically. Now this chemical is a little bit slow acting, so you're not gonna see results straight away. You are gonna see results, it might just take a little bit longer. So the younger the plant, the easier it is gonna to be to kill it, like it is with most plants that you're trying to knock out. Um, but basically you'll see a bit of damage, a bit of yellowing at about 10 to 14 days, depending on your air temperatures. So at the moment, since this is growing so rapidly, I'm gonna see some damage, probably even a little bit earlier than that. But 10 to 14 days, and you'll generally see it die off within about a month. It can be a little bit earlier, a little bit later. Again, just depending on the temperatures in the air and how actively it is growing. As I said, older plants or more mature plants are gonna take a little bit longer to knock. So sometimes you might have to give them a follow-up application. So 
In regards to timing on that, I just recommend you do a follow-up application once you see it start to shoot again, so you see some green shoots. There's not really going to be a time period because it really does depend on the temperatures you're getting to when you apply it again, so just look for those green shoots if it hasn't died off. Okay, so let's go get my knapsack and mix up some chemical hay. So this stuff is pretty crazy. The rate per 100 square meter is only like 1.3 grams, so <laughs> it's crazy low. So I'd actually recommend you use like a little five um, litre knapsack or like a little pump sprayer. Um, but mine has a roundup in it still, because I didn't wash it out because I'm a bad boy. So we're not going to use that yet. So we'll just use my battery powered knapsack, which is a bit of overkill, but let's talk about how I'm going to put it out, because I'm only spot spraying how I'm going to mix it up. So before we mix any chemicals up, make sure we've got at least some gloves on and some glasses so you don't splash your eyes. So this product here, basically what you want to do is you can use 1.3 grams per 100 square meters. So I recommend you put in 10 liters with that 1.3 grams, 10 liters of water that is. So they give you a little measuring little thing just here. Um, you can see that it says 1.3 grams on that bad boy just there. So, and then it comes with Look how tiny that is, but you don't need much. Cool, so today, since I'm only spot spraying and I know I'm not gonna be doing 100 square meters of um, spraying nut grass, I'm gonna half that. So I put half in this, and then only put five liters in this. So that's how we're gonna do our spot spray today. So I'm gonna fill my tank up to about four liters, put this in, and then top it up back to the five liters after that. Alrighty, so I'm gonna crack this open over top of this as well so it doesn't get on the lawn. Preferably, you'd probably put this on concrete anyway, but yeah, I'm taking on a bit of Connor Ward because I've got a sticker on the your shirt on. Drop it in, put your lid back on. And if you ever look in here, you can see them in there. Just hanging out. Can you see them? I don't know. So now I'm gonna mix that up. So I'm gonna get my little paint mixer and mix up that junk in there. All right, you can see I've come back already and it's nearly dissolved by itself. We'll chuck this bad boy in. Oh, that's gonna fit. Yeah. Sweet. And then I'll just wash it down while it's in there. Alrighty, so I've got some boots and these spray pants, which I'm not keen on, but... You gotta do what you gotta do, boy. Respect the pants. I can already tell it's gonna be so hot. Alright, so when you are doing a spray like this, just do it like you normally would spray your yard, but just turn on the sprayer when you see some weeds, depends on what you're spraying, but we're doing nutgrass today. So when you see some nutgrass, let's go. Alright, so it's been like an hour since I did that last little clip just then. Knapsack sprayer isn't charged, and so I left it on for 45 minutes and it's still not charged, so I decided I'd wash this out and use this instead, which is probably better anyway. So this is just a little Nilex one from Bunnings. Um, so let's just let's just try and do it again. I've been in this nearly the whole time, and I am sweaty. Anyway, let's go. Speak with clarity. Cause there's too much noise around us. Or maybe it's just me. I'm done. I don't think I've ever sweat. Yeah, look at that. So much in my life. Sorry if that disgusts you. Look at that. Sweaty dog. So sweaty. Oh, that fresh air. Alrighty, just a quick little tip for you guys. After you do spray, make sure you don't mow the lawn for at least two days afterwards, so 48 hours. Um, and try to mow two days before as well, just so the actual leaf on the plant is pretty high and long and growing quite a bit so that when you knock it you've got more area surface area to actually hit as well and I recommend you get some marking dye like some blue marking dye so you can see where you're going unlike I did but I had more than I thought I had but it wasn't too bad so you know it wasn't a big deal not having the marking dye but anyway it's all good right I'm gonna wrap the video up there gonna go have a shower now because I'm sweaty <laughs> so sweaty anyway thanks guys so much for watching if you have any questions about that ask them below I'll try to get to them um, yeah, but like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and you have a good week. Now if you guys missed my other video on this flamingo here, guess what, it's still alive, I didn't kill it. I got a dummy one obviously, but some people actually thought I did, but no, here it is, it's still here. And I'll be displaying it in my yard for the next little while. Even though I think these things are greasy and ugly.